Hi, everybody. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me. Such a beautiful venue, and the walk here was absolutely fantastic, <coughs> inspiring. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is Open Foundation and what we're doing around the world and what and then bring it back to Ireland. So we start 2004 <coughs> uh, uh, with an <coughs> idea in mind to open up data and to see it used to empower citizens and organizations to answer questions that matter and drive positive change. And as Gwen mentioned, it's all started from defining. We, we actually came up with a definition. Uh, a piece of data of con or content is open if anyone is free to use, reuse, and redistribute it, subject only at most to the requirements to attribute and or share alike. And we are an international community driven nonprofit working to open up information around the world so it can be used to empower citizens' organizations to build fair and sustainable societies. By opening up, we mean making data collected by the government on behalf and the expense of the citizens available for use in non-proprietary, machine-consumable formats. And we do our best to see it used. What is open knowledge? It's what open data and content become when they are made useful, accessible, understandable, meaningful, with the capacity to help someone to solve a real problem. Why? open knowledge, because it's empowering. It enables us to understand and change our world and our lives. The culture of collaboration, community, and sharing is better and more fulfilling way to learn, create, and improve things. And what do we do? We, we make data available and accessible by evangelizing open data and by making its advocacy and by making tools. So we create open source software, data sets, training programs, handbooks, policy toolkits, and other works. Basically, whatever is needed to move the space forward. Uh, and we believe that open data can help. So we've developed, for example, where does my money go to? I think it was 2007, we deployed it in the United Kingdom. And this piece of software is helping citizens to see how the taxes spent by the government. And since then, this, has been, uh, this platform has been redeployed, well, as far as I remember, in more than 40 countries around the world. And we also developed uh, an open source data management platform called CCAN, which stands for Comprehensive Knowledge Archive Network. And this became an industry standard all around the world and used by the government, like the data.gov in the United States government, uh, the UK government, Central Data Open Data, Central Open Data Platform is using it, Australian, Austrian government, I think more than 40 as well, governments. And we also organize events. So the biggest open knowledge event in the world is Open Knowledge Festival and the next one will take place in July in Berlin. It's our 10th ten anniversary, so we are planning to make it big. Uh, well, what's driving us? There are three E's. First of all, there are economic benefits to open data. In October 2013, McKinsey published a report, uh, and they reckon that the open data has potential to unlock between three to five trillion dollars in economic value uh, across seven domains of the global economy annually. There is, I think there is one lifetime opportunity to improve government efficiency by reducing the number of duplicate requests and by reducing the number of Freedom of Information Act requests, for example. Uh, it's like when central open data platforms put in place, in many cases, one, up to one third of the traffic to those platforms come from the government itself. 
so it makes life for the government easier. And information is power, obviously. It's empowering us as customers, clients, consumers, parents, patients, investors, and citizens. It helps us to make better informed decisions about food we eat, about health choices we make, about education we choose, about <coughs> pension plans we decide to invest to, and about public representative we elect to represent our interests. The benefits of open data can be self-enforcing as individuals perceive benefits from the use of data. They will help to improve it. Uh, accuracy, to improve accuracy in details of information available, thus increasing the value of data and benefits that they can receive. However, for this, enabling ecosystem is required. So, bring back to home. Last October, we've looked at the availability of 10 key data sets across 77 jurisdictions around the world. Uh, full disclosure. I've been involved in it, and Tracy, who is here, was helping me as well. So, according to our methodology, the United Kingdom came on top, and the same, uh, was, the same result was produced by another similar survey, which was conducted at a similar time by the World War Foundation, the Open Data Institute. Uh, according to Open Data Census, OKFs, Ireland came out of 77 countries, 42nd. And in, according to Open Data Barometer, we're on 29th. So there is a lot of opportunities for us to catch up with the rest of the world. Uh, and the problem is that data produced by the Irish government is, pros, is spread across of do, dozens of domains and really accessible in non-proprietary machine-readable formats. So what do we do to ensure that Ireland don't miss out? We're developing an enabling ecosystem to empower citizens' organizations to make better evidence-based informed decisions with open knowledge. And we do it two ways. From top down, we engage with the Irish government on policy level uh, through the open government partnership process. For those, of, like I should probably say, what the Open Government Partnership is, and it's multi, a multilateral initiative that aims to secure concrete commitments from the governments to promote transparency, empower citizens, fight corruption, and harness technology to strengthen governance. The Irish government committed to participate in the Open Government Partnership in May 2013. And in November, it's been of November 2013, the Minister Holland actually at the Open Government Partnership in London uh, launched a major open data initiative. And we'll have enormous opportunity in May because the Irish government is inviting Open Government Partnership to Dublin. The event will take place in Dublin Castle in the beginning of May. So a lot of issues will be, will have enormous opportunity to highlight a lot of issues from the international perspective there. Uh, and we, uh, we're unlocking, we, we're generating demand for open data by organizing weekly, monthly, and quarterly community engagement events. Our meetups taken every Thursday of each month, we have open data meetups we, when we do talking, and the idea of them to spark collaboration between those people who have data, those people who know what can be done with the data, and those who know how to put data in context. And we organize hackathons so to facilitate development of instances of open data made useful. So we're giving people tools and skills they need to move from discovering open data to actively using and demanding new data sets. 
So here is an island. We don't have central open data platform. And the data spread across dozens of domains. And instead of waiting for the government to come up with one and to find resources, to find supply, we actually, in, la in la last September, we've, at the hackathon, we've developed an instance of CCAN. We deployed it. It's work in progress at the moment. And we also audited availability of data. I can see there are some participants of Hackathon here, thanks to them. And we were able to discover 166 data sets, which yeah, all around the place. And we want to use the Sican platform to bring them into, make them discoverable from one place. Uh, as Claire Schurke said, it's not what you do, what you've done first, it's what you're going to do next. So our next meetup will take place in UCC and it will be dedicated to open education. It will take place on Thursday, 23rd of February. Many of you are based in UCC, so you're well invited. And this event will follow up, followed up by book sprint where we are planning to kick off development of of educational material for introduction to programming. Ireland doesn't have curriculum for introduction to computer science or programming, and many countries facing the similar problem. So we want to start generating open educational material and put it for use. And of course, all our work is licensed under Creative Commons license. Thank you.